And we're back for stage 12. Tor keeps moving along. Final stage of the uh, Alps today. And uh, yesterday quite a few sprinters got eliminated. The uh, Tor has a, uh, I think I talked about it already, but a maximum amount of time you can be behind the race stage winner and uh, Marcel Kittle and uh, come on brain Mark Cavendish didn't quite uh, make the time in both cases they both even though they were well behind the time and had every right to just go ahead and climb off the bike and not bother to finish both went ahead and finished the stage I can imagine that it would be that much worse to just get off the bike. I mean, you know you're not going to make it, but who knows? The commissaires might change their mind. So this is Pierre Rollin, obviously a French rider who has gone off the front maybe slightly controversial, attacked in the feed zone. Designated place where riders grab musettes full of food and water bottles and on hot days little ice packets to stick down their shirts. <clears throat> um, and the race always slows down at that point too, so. Now he did right after everybody got their bags, not while they were getting them, so it's not necessarily a true faux pas, but it was on the cusp, a cusp faux pas. So, um, but here he is, he's gone alone, now he was attacking the breakaway group, not the whole peloton. But um, here he is about to crest the top of the uh, easiest of the climbs today, the La Sets de Montevignier. It's a Cat 2 climb. It's actually a beautiful road. Um, 17 switchbacks, very, it's almost like going straight up a wall. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, I've got a summer cold. I'm not happy about it either. So now Pierre Roland has won. The race today ends atop Alpe d'Huez. And even if you don't know cycling, you probably know that climb. And uh, Pierre Roland has won on that stage in the past. Um, actually just nipping the American T.J. Van Garderen at the line. But, you know, that's what happened yesterday, too. The guy had been leading the breakaway all day. Got very close to the top of the mountain, and his former teammate zoomed around him right at the end. It's got to be heartbreaking. But, you know, it is right bike racing. So, almost done here laying the line work in, just getting these houses on the side. These beautiful chalet style houses. We are up high in the French Alps. Actually a little higher today, even in July, on Alpe d'Huez. There'll probably be shots of people skiing. All right. Here, we'll call this setting the stage. Multiple interpretations, which I always like. Okay, 
So that's it laid out. We will um, start with the yellow as always. So I've talked about how this palette is laid out, so I keep my colors sharp. So we have yellows, the brown tones, the bright greens, the more um, tree greens, flesh tones, two different reds. But also notice this palette. These are the um, Richson Art Cake Watercolors. The brand name is St. Petersburg, Yarka St. Petersburg. Really great vibrant color, which I think you've probably noticed by now. The paints are in cake form. That's what these little cakes are. But see, I also have it arranged warm colors up here, warm lighter colors, darker, cooler colors down along this side. Just helps me keep my palette arranged. You know, there's always that moment when you stick your brush in the wrong spot. Of course, that's where you can just uh, rinse it out in the water. So the fans along the top. This guy by himself down here. I guess he just wanted his own special point of view. Everybody else clumped right up here at the top. Now we'll switch to the red. The sponsor, and they're sponsors for everything because, you know, it's an expensive event to put on. The sponsor of the polka dot jersey is Carrefour, which is a French grocery store chain. It took me the longest time to figure out their logo, which is right here. And although I've drawn it loosely, it's the French flag with, in a diamond form with the C dropped out in negative space. For those who aren't familiar with art terms, negative space is you know, the space that isn't the object. When I would lecture kids, I would say negative space is what makes you able to use a coffee cup because the handle the space inside of the handle is negative space, so that's how you pick it up. And of course the inside of the cup is negative space, and that's where you put the coffee. So without negative space, it would be a pretty useless object. Uh, uh, Pierre Roland rides for Education First, EF Education First. They blessedly brought pink back into the Peloton. There was a team, Lamprey Marita, who always had bright pink. And when you compare this kit against Team Sky, it's like, thank God they got some color. Now, the team today had its team leader pull out of the race. I'm going to assume due to illness because I never saw him really, although he did crash in Perry roubaix or the Roubaix stage, I should say. So that puts the team at a disadvantage, just like BMC doesn't have their race leader anymore. It was one of the things I always pointed out when people were griping about doping. And I still think, you know, I'm glad we've eliminated doping, or close to it anyway. But doping didn't keep you from crashing. Doping didn't keep you from getting sick. In fact, if anything, it increased the chance of you getting sick. So it's, it still means something. So I still object to having eliminated Armstrong, but, you know, it is what it is. Part of Armstrong's problem was he was such a jerk about it. But, you know, that's now old news, right? So Pierre is wild. 
I'm sure he would love, and he is picking up mountain points here, right here on the banner. That's what this is. Um, he's really in this for the stage win. And pretty much his team and BMC, who lost their rider, it's kind of what they've got left to compete for now is stage wins because the GC hopes have just gone out the window. GC, general classification. So, just laying in these colors. Now, if you notice the browns here that I met, this is a little bit of sienna. But to keep it from being too bright, I'm mixing in with this blue-purple that I use for my darks. Now you may hear some construction noise in the background there. Working on my street. I don't know how, just how sensitive the sound is here. <clears throat> so again, we're making the blacks now, and this is a deep green here and a little bit of alizarin crimson. It's always fun to <laughs> keep missing the balance. So lay in these shorts. Most riders wear black shorts. I do when I ride. I do have one pair of red ones, but it's funny to listen to uh, commentators complain about riders in uh, white shorts. You know, that age-old thing for, certainly, people in fashion know that white, particularly white pants, will make your tuchus look bigger. So people will complain about, particularly the uh, championship, the rainbow jersey wearing white shorts with that. Of course, these guys, they had big tuchuses. It's a lot of power used to drive their legs up these mountains and sprinters in particular tend to be quite large, which is why we saw so many of them eliminated on the big mountain stage. They're carrying a whole lot more weight up the mountains. So it was interesting to learn that like Greipel, one of my more favorite sprinters, his nickname, the Gorilla, weighs um, almost 200 pounds, like 190 pounds. And then the climbers will weigh as little as 120 pounds. So those sprinters, of course, are much more. It's a big challenge to get up and over the mountains. They're carrying, you know, a third again as much weight. And a lot of racing is about power to weight ratios. So that's why sprinters can't sprint because their power to weight is pretty low. And sprinters can't climb because their weight is pretty high. All right, so I will again remark that this painting will is for sale. First come, first serve. I'm only doing originals. There's no multiples of these. I'll try to get it posted by 4 or 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It'll be posted on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And if you go there, you can click through to any of the paintings you like on any of the posts to my website, gregleach.com. G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H. And there you will um, be able to purchase the piece securely. And I do ship anywhere in the world. So I hope you've enjoyed this, learned a little something about the tour and about watercolors. And we'll be back again tomorrow. Let's get just a little more bright green right there. There we go. All right. Thank you kindly.